is Steve back with the basics of photography class with Impact. This lesson is all about inspiration, how to find inspiration in a photo, how to look for things that inspire you to be able to take an interesting photo and then how to apply that inspiration into something that looks really good and looks super artistic. If you missed the first lesson, I recommend going back and watching those and then practicing what you learn in those before this one because if you can understand the creativity and the technical side and then get into the inspiration part of things, your photos are really gonna start coming together. For some people, inspiration comes really easy, depending on whatever art they're doing or how they are as a person. Even the best artists have hard times getting inspiration sometimes. It's a very common thing, but I find for me, writing down things that I'm passionate about and things that I care about often starts re-sparking my interests and re-sparking my ideas to start creating and being artistic. It can be as simple as starting with a mind map and just drawing out things that you're interested in and things that you're passionate about. And they don't have to necessarily mean one thing or be the answer to your inspiration, but you'll find that as you start writing a bunch of different things down, the same common things that you like will start appearing in all different things. For example, for me, I like to travel. And if I mind mapped travel, I would find that I liked culture. But if I mind mapped my own family, I would also find culture. And so I can almost bridge that into one theme. I also notice that I love photographing people. And when I mind map an idea of people, I find that there's things in pop culture that I like and looks and styles and fashion that I like um, for photographing people but there's also things from a human perspective and a friend perspective and even just from a comedy perspective because I like to have fun and I like to laugh too so being able to incorporate all these different things in my mind map and then find different similarities in it will help me find something that I want to take a picture of so how do you turn an idea you like into art that's what we want to brainstorm right now and I find that you know it's pretty easy to learn about whatever your subject is if it's a living subject for example if you have a dog and your dog is really fun Funny, you're probably gonna want to take a picture of your dog that shows how funny he is. You're not gonna want to take a serious picture of your dog. The same goes for people. If you're photographing a person, it's great to just sit down and get to know them. If you're photographing somebody who's a musician, listen to their music, learn a little bit about who they are. And then when you take their picture, you're gonna be able to use the different framing techniques you learn to set the mood. If you think that they're a very serious artist and it's a really dramatic music and you're taking a picture of a musician, then you probably aren't gonna like them really beautifully in soft light, you're probably going to want them to be in a hard light um, with a lot of shadows. If you're taking a picture of nature outside, how does that nature make you feel? Is it a tree that's lost its leaves in the fall? Is that going to be something that you photograph in a very beautiful way? Is it going to be something you photograph a little bit more dramatic? Are you going to take a picture from really low to make it big and empowering? Let those thoughts go through your mind and decide for yourself. The answer is just what you feel. What you want to do is have the photo of whatever you're taking a picture picture of and anything else in that picture, whether it's framed in in a rule of thirds or it's framed in with leading lines, you want all of the things in your picture to encompass and, and tell a story about what you're taking a picture of. You want to present your subject in the proper way by knowing them and knowing what you're taking a picture of and how it should look or feel. And then you want your surroundings and your framing techniques to be able to set the mood for that picture so that the entire picture tells one whole story story and it's not just a story of this subject and the rest of the picture is blank. The reason that you do this is that it makes your pictures interesting and it also leaves room for people to have their own opinion about the photo and the best kind of art is something that means a lot to you and tells your story how you like it but also gives the freedom for anybody looking at your artwork to feel how they feel about it in their own way. And if you take the time to put all that together and create one full piece of art that tells a story, it really opens the doors up for people to fall in love with your photos and fall in love with your creativity and be very passionate with you about what you've created. It's the best feeling in art. So how do you do this? You find something to take a picture of, a person, a place, a thing, whatever it might be that is inspired by you that you want to take a picture of. Then you learn about it. You learn about your subject. You spend time with it. You spend time understanding, getting an idea of how that subject would be presented in a picture. And then you find a place to take that picture or something that complements it to be able to incorporate the entire shot into something that tells a full story. Once you have that, you find your location. And like I said in other lessons, 
you can find those locations just in little pockets around that'll be able to complement your photo and tell that story. You can use those different framing techniques to be able to make them interesting and to be able to set different perspectives and angles and get the picture to be really three-dimensional. And then you can make it dramatic with shadows or you can make it soft and beautiful with a soft focus and you can combine everything that you've learned in these previous lessons to build one single very very good photo. And if you start doing this every time you take a picture and realize that taking a picture even if you just have your phone and you see something is more than just pushing a button then you're going to appreciate it a lot more and you're going to find that everything you take a picture of is going to start looking very amazing very very quickly. So if you've watched all three lessons you've learned how to find the perspective and create a perspective of a photo. You've learned different framing techniques. You've learned how to take pictures at different angles. You've learned how to choose your focus and why to choose your focus and how to blur out different photos. And you've also learned how to see light and understand where it is. And with this lesson, you've now learned how to find a little bit of inspiration and then combine all those skills to make one little idea into something really big and really cool. And that's it. That's the basics of photography. And if you keep practicing these things, what happens when you do something a lot is you get really good really fast. And so keep practicing these basics and then as you get more comfortable, you can start pushing your camera or your phone into some of those manual techniques. You can start trying different things. You can start being a little bit more creative with lighting that's around you. But take your time, because even for me, I've been doing this as a professional for 10 years and I've been taking pictures my entire life and still I'm learning different things and I'm trying new things. And that's part of the fun of any art you do in life is to be able to keep learning and enjoy what you're doing and always push a little bit more. Thank you guys so much much for coming out for this class and we'll see you soon.